Everybody. This is Karen Malone Wright, founder of the Not Mom and the Not Mom Conversation, which you are now a part of. This is my partner in crime, Laura Lavoy, based down south. Hello. Where are you today, Laura? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia today. Okay, and I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, and our guest today is going to be the amazing Jody Day from Gateway Women. But first, we want to make sure you know the rules if you haven't caught our show before. Laura, you want to enlighten them? Sure. Well, we've got a, a couple things we like to call our code of conduct. Uh, so let me share those with you. Uh, mostly because the Not Mom conversation, the Not Mom in general, we are a welcoming space. Uh, we want to listen to, understand, encourage, and embrace women without children, both by choice and by chance. Uh, and that leads us to our second official rule, I suppose you would call it that. Uh, one of the things we do not tolerate at the Not Mom, the only thing we really don't tolerate is mean girl language. So the use of mean girl terms to describe moms and their children or anyone who is living a different Not Mom experience, uh, we do not, uh, we just don't tolerate that. Uh, so having said that, we encourage you to participate in our comments uh, and we will be able to you know, chat with you in real time, which is super fun. We can do that live. So our guest today is Jody, and I think you have more background on Jody, although I know could do it by heart. Laura, <laughs> I do, I do. Uh, well, I mean, I have some. Uh, well, we have Jody Day of Gateway Women. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to put her on screen so she can join the conversation and tell us what, what she's been up to. I'm hey, hello. Jody. Hey, hello. How are really? you? Welcome to the show. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. It's really, it's lovely to see you both and to talk to the Not Mum audience. So as the head and founder of Gateway Women for childless women, women who are without children or not mothers and not by their own choice, you were flying high. You probably still are. Your <laughs> book, Living the Life Unexpected, had just been released and I think still is a big seller. Um, you were relocating your own life. Why, there it is now. Second edition. Came out this oh, year. Yeah, good on you. Fantastic. Um, and you were moving from London, I think, to Spain. Can you tell us a little bit about where Gateway Women is in the world right now, and where are you? <laughs> Absolutely. So I I moved home from uh, from London to rural Ireland. Um, and Gateway Women is now um, a kind of an Irish-based organization. Um, but I'm currently in Spain. Um, <laughs> my, uh, my Mr. Gateway has a, has a house in Spain. And um, so having been uh, locked down in the pandemic in Ireland for several months, when the opportunity to, to kind of change quarantine came up, we, we jumped. Um, because we have, um, my partner's 90 year old mother lives with us. Oh my. Uh, so we are, we have been sort of voluntary quarantine all year in order to protect her. So actually uh, we've kind of been in quarantine since February. So it was really nice in July to swap it for a different place. Uh, and we'll be going back to Ireland, you know, but actually moving around, as you know, right now in, is very difficult moving around when you're also shielding someone vulnerable is, is, is really challenging. Yeah. Um, but she's, she's good. She's in, she's in good health. Well, that's wonderful. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Good on you. And we'll keep, keep good thoughts for all three of you. Mm -hmm. I, I do like the, I, I'm sure Mr. Gateway likes that term better than my husband being called Mr. Not Mom. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, yeah, a, there's a simple answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> or just 
Karen, I think. Mm. So tell us, you're involved big time with World Childers Week this year. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that event? Yeah, I mean, World Childless Week started in 2017. Um, Stephanie Phillips um, started it, British founder. I mean, she actually expected it kind of to get a few likes on Facebook and was just absolutely blown away with the response. It, it went massive, very, 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 very fast. She asked me to be what she calls a champion, a World Childless Week champion. So I kind of, you know, gave my support and I guess the backing of Gateway Women uh, to help amplify it. And I think one of the really lovely things about World Childless Week, and there are 23 of us champions now from all around the world, is it's an amazing opportunity to bring together a lot of individuals and organizations, you know, like the Mo Not Mum, like Gateway Women, that we're all sort of, you know, doing our bit in, a, you know, to, to raise the profile of childlessness and, and child freedom and to support each other. But most of us, well, I think all of us are sort of, you know, one woman or two women or one, you know, or, you know, I don't know anyone who's more than three people. So it's lovely when we kind of actually can come together. Uh, and that's what World Childless Week is. And so it's a way to bring together so many different people, so much goodwill. And one of the lovely things about it, as well as the things that, that World Childless Week is organising, all with the different webinars, obviously there's no live in-person meetups this year, is it's, it's is each day has a theme and over the last couple of months people have been asked to contribute pieces on that theme and they can be anonymous or they could be credited and in the past few years often this has been the first time that a lot of people have broken their silence about their childlessness so there will be each day under each theme an amazing variety of things published that have never been seen before from professional writers, from first time writers, musicians, poets, artists, you know, an enormous variety of expression about what it means to be childless to them. And that's very special, I think, for World Childless. So it's not just us broadcasting in a way, it's also about really creating a safe space for people to share about their experience of childlessness, which we all know is incredibly diverse. <laughs> And also impacted by geography, um, is what I've learned. Yeah. Um, um, tell me a bit more about that when you say impacted by geography. What What do you mean? Well, I think that if I, I mean, obviously I'm a black woman living in America. If mm -hmm. I were the exact same look, but living in Botswana or, or Zimbabwe, or, you know, I'm, it would be a totally different thing. Um, um, in terms of culture, I think uh, certainly in, although I know statistically the number of women without children is rising in places like Ireland and Mexico that used to be traditionally thought of as Catholic countries and therefore everybody, will, everybody wanted children. The reality today is not so much and you're really going against a long-standing culture. So your experience is different. That, that's all I know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're really trying with World Childless Week to, to reach more and more diverse communities around the world. And, and amongst our champions this year, we also have um, a champion from Zimbabwe as well, which is great. I yeah. know. <laughs> um, and it's absolutely the experience. And, you know, and we have, um, you know, um, a woman of colour who you know from the UK, Yvonne John. Um, we have, you know, men, we have women, um, heterosexual, diverse sexualities, and it's just really starting to kind of be as diverse as possible um, in a proactive way, because the more, the more diversity there are in the stories, the more richness there is, we all benefit. And, um, you know, I, I just, this, you know, I, this year has just brought it home to me in, in such a visceral way how important it is to champion diversity whenever possible um, and you know it's always been something it's always been something very dear to me but I think in the pandemic and also with the, the Black Lives Matter movement it's just shown to me how how fast things can can get can get mean and dangerous and how important it is for anyone who has any kind of platform 
to really do their best to push a message of inclusion and diversity and to kind of put you know to for me I try really hard to to do something rather than just talk about it um without sort of being too performative it's always like a fine line you know but, you know about I don't want to be seen to um be what do they call it on sort of you know twitter sort of you know when you, you're sort of showing up your morals you know you're showing that you're a good person you know I, I sort of try not to do that I just try behind the scenes just to live my values in a way that is inclusive yeah. and that's why we love you <laughs> it is absolutely and you know what what I think is really interesting about uh you know the event this year and I think this is a a, a function of kind of where we are right now you know, we can't do in person. So we've had to get really creative about doing virtual events. And I think that offers the ability to do something like World Childless Week, where we are bringing people together from all over the world uh, in as creative a way as possible because we have to. And it's amazing to me that things like this are, are becoming so almost second nature to be able to do it in a way that's very, uh, you know, very smooth and very, uh, you know, it attracts so many people to everybody being online. Uh, and it really gives us an opportunity for people who couldn't have participated in the past to be able to do it now. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean I, I've been I've been working online for a few years and, you know, sort of using Zoom and running online courses. And and uh, so I kind of it was kind of weird because it felt like suddenly the whole world kind of sort of crashed my workspace. <laughs> um, but also, I think it is really normalizing working like this. Uh, and I, you know, our our work, our weekend workshops, the Gateway Women Weekend Workshops, which is called the Reignite Weekend, you know, we had to cancel all of those this year and those are going online this autumn. And we're going to be able to offer them in North America and Australia. Yeah. Because, because they're going to be online. Um, and although I think, you know, when we are able to meet again in person, we're going to have such a great party. But I think that, you know, it'll be lovely to do things in person again. But I think doing them online as well will no longer be weird. Yes. It's, which is going to be, it's going to give us so many more opportunities, I agree, Laura, for international stuff. And actually, when they call the, the webinar that Karen's joining me for, on Wednesday uh, for World Childless Week, which is inspiring to our elders. And um, we actually have women from uh, all over the world who are my guests from, you know, from North America, from Australia, from Europe and from the UK, which is amazing. Absolutely, we've got a quick slide to show people what is happening. Uh, <laughs> yep. So, so for anyone who wants to tune in, Jody, give us a little bit of background on what's going to be happening on Wednesday. Okay, so each day of World Childless Week has a theme. Um, and the theme for Wednesday the 16th is Aging Without Children. So as well as all the content that I was talking about, the sort of the user-generated content, which will go online that day on the World Childless Week website, there are two webinars happening on Wednesday. One is with the original founder of Aging Without Children in the UK, which is an organization I used to be involved with when she was running it. And that's about sort of practical later life planning. And I think that's something that's really used, I think that's absolutely necessary you know, whether you're a not mum, you know, by choice or by chance, it's really, really helpful. And then later in the day um, at 3 p.m. UK time, um, I think it's, uh, what time did you say it was for you, Karen, when we were speaking earlier? I believe, I believe, I thought it was 10 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I have in my notes. <laughs> I thought I saw it at the wrong time. <laughs> so, um, all of the details you can get them on the World Childless Week website, which is worldchildlessweek.net. And my webinar is very much about uh, really having discussions with um, some, you know, some childless elders, of, of which Karen is is one of my sheroes, about how to how to kind of navigate your life as as a childless elder. You know, how to deal with the ageism, how to do with um, you know, grandchildren grief and dealing with, you know, dealing with your friends becoming grandmothers and, you know, that whole thing happening all over again. Um, and, you know, later life planning, 
what do we do for Christmas? Um, you know, lots, we'll, we'll have a pretty diverse conversation about it. But I just wanted to really bring some inspiration, you know, because I think a lot of the conversations around aging with our children are often and necessarily, they can be quite fear-based. And I think there's absolutely a place for those worries, but I think there's also a place for a little bit of inspiration. Uh, and that's what that's why I'm bringing these amazing women together on Wednesday. There was a woman I connected with, and forgive me wherever you are, ma'am, I have forgotten your name, but I think she was on the Aging Without Children Facebook page. And I told her, I wrote to her that I was gonna steal her comment. And I did, and I put it on the Not Mom Facebook page. And what she said was, I may never be a grandmother, but I know that I will be a grand woman. And I, you know, I'll be turning 65 this very week. And I got to tell you, that just made me feel great. Because um, I, I think as we grow older, what, I, what people have told me who are older than myself is that some of the experiences of childlessness are cyclical that a lot of the things you went through in your 20s and 30s as your friends had children and sort of what didn't have time for you, if you will, then you got your friends back after their children grew up. But then when the grandchildren come, they put you to the side once more. And so I'm, I'm all about growing old without kids and kicking the tar out of it. See how I clean that up? <laughs> <laughs> but that's just one of that's just one of the days programming you know for right, for, right, um, for right. and like, there's amazing stuff happening every day there's like a really amazing writing webinar uh, writing for well-being on the monday you know on friday there's a great one which is on uh, dealing with comments of hurt which the Karen Enfield, who's Gate Boomer's operation director, has organized that one. So how to deal with comments that hurt when you just want to take off. <laughs> you know, and it's just um this year is is phenomenal. It's it's really gathering pace. It's the fourth year, and um I'm I'm really excited and proud to be involved. Me too. Thank you for inviting me. So I've got this weird thought about we were talking about pandemics, Jody. Yes. Um, I keep, you know, here, I, here in America, we've got the West Coast on fire. We've got the Southern Coast being bombarded by hurricane after hurricane, and the season has just begun. Mm -hmm. We have an election coming up that's divided us in more ways than I can even count. I'm wondering what you would respond because every now and then I think somebody's going to be scrolling through our Facebook page and they're going to think why in with all these problems in the world right now why does like who matters a hill of beans about women without kids mm -hmm. and I know how I might respond to that but you have su such a global reach I'm wondering how you would respond to that kind of thinking well it's I think that's there's always that kind of uh, I think it's called hashtag you know what aboutism you know what about this what about that you know, this sense that there is a, a hierarchy of problems in the world that needs to be addressed and I think that sometimes feeds into a lot of women experience that around their grief as well it's like well my you know my grief or my pain over childlessness isn't as isn't as big as that person's therefore they get to be upset and to grieve and I don't right and I think it speaks to this idea of a kind of a scarcity mentality that there there isn't enough um there isn't enough empathy to go around there isn't enough justice to go around there isn't enough fairness to go around these things are not limited they are unlimited and it just because we are paying attention to the needs of women without children doesn't mean we're taking away attention from other people we need to expand our empathy and expand our uh, you know, to include more and more diverse populations and viewpoints rather than seeing it as a competition for a small pile. So I think they all matter. And I think there's many, many more things that matter that aren't even remotely on anyone's radar. And I think yeah. we need to open our hearts and we need a much bigger pie of kindness to go around. Here, here. Mm. <laughs> 
Um, and childlessness it, 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 changed that for me because I think I had, I, I I had quite a limited viewpoint, you know, when I was younger, and you know, not being able to have have children and then finding myself sing, you know, divorced and single and childless at midlife and discovering that I was social plankton because of it, <laughs> you know, um, you know, came as an incredible shock to me. And, and and although childlessness broke my heart, it also broke my heart open and really helped me to start to see things that I had been hidden from me before by my privilege, by my privilege of being sort of, you know, married and you know, loads of things I couldn't see because they weren't happening to me and they were outside my, per and, and I think becoming part of a stigmatized, disenfranchised group because of my childlessness really made me start to see how much this is happening to people, to other people, you know, to people who are not the dominant ethnicity in any culture, to refugees, to people who are disabled, to people who are older, to people who are differently able, whatever it is, there's like, there are so many ways to be othered. And, and childless really opened actually my heart to that. And then my mind followed. And I think that's that's so you know that's one of the extraordinary gifts that can come from, I suppose you know you putting my therapy hat on you know post traumatic growth. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And I, I want to remind our viewers too that uh, you know this is live, and if you're commenting, if you have any questions for Jody as we're going along, please feel free to put them in the comment section, and we'll talk about them. Um, but I think, Jody, I love what you say because I think for Karen and myself, that was kind of, or at least how I got involved with the Not Mom, I shouldn't speak for Karen, but, you know, I recognized that I, I chose not to have children, but that didn't mean that I couldn't understand or relate to women who didn't choose that, you know, and that, that we do have a lot in common either way, and I would rather have more empathy than less. Uh, you know, so that's why we kind of started this or we combined this grand experiment to try to get, uh, you know, by chance and by choice women together in the same place. And and for me, that's always been the most important part. I think what if I could, I'm sorry, Jody, go on. I was going to say it's not without its challenges. Um, yeah, right. You know, combining those, you know, those <laughs> populations. I think for me, when I was in the early days of, of my of my grief and sort of even you know learning about the terminology and learning about the difference, I uh, I found the sort of the, the child free point of view very challenging at first. Um, I think it was very confronting to me to think, well, here is a group of women who've chosen this identity that I don't want. It was very hard for me, and then as I kind of progressed through my grief and I got a lot more curious, I got I, thought, I started to think, okay, they chose this identity. They celebrate the identity of being an actor. There must be something in here I'm missing, you know? And I kind of got a lot more curious and it really helped me with healing. I, uh, I read a lot of child-free authors and followed a lot of child-free blogs because I was intellectually very curious. I thought, okay, I'm missing something here. That's exactly this. where I was, Jody, at the start of the Not Mom. I was, because I wanted children so badly. I was like, wait, there are women just not doing it? You know. <laughs> And then Laura came into my life and, and embodied it so beautifully that, that that really helped. It did. It really helped me understand. It's like anything else in life. It's a freaking choice. <laughs> you know, it can be a choice. Yeah. Um, I don't you, know about you, Karen, but now that I'm sort of really, I feel like I've been, you know, on my sort of journey of recovery from childlessness for, you know, a, a, a decade. And in many ways now I feel... As, as far as I can know, I feel as at peace with being childless as if I had chosen it, although I'm never going to be able to compare the experiences. But you know what I mean? It, it trips me up occasionally. I still have goofy moments, you know, and every, you know, and every so often I get walloped by grief that I didn't see coming. But, it part, you know, I know what to do with it. I know what it is. It, I process it. It usually passes reasonably quickly. Because I kind of, I kind of, I'm familiar with with, with the protocols, you know, but I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't want a different life anymore. 
and I don't see my life as a booby prize, as a second best to the life I would have had if I'd been a mum. I see it as a different version of Jodie's life, but not necessarily a worse one. And that's been so liberating. How about you, Karen? I agree with that. Well, and I will also say that the not mom helped me because yeah. you know, I, I, I'm the oldest of our little group here. And, you know, when I was going through the, the throes of grieving, coming, trying desperately to look for acceptance, the internet was so young that there were only chat rooms. And yeah. most of the chat rooms for women's issues were focused only on infertility mm -hmm. or uh, IVF or you know, just continuing to try to be a mother. It, there wasn't, I couldn't find anyone online admitting, I can't believe I'm not gonna be a mother. I can't stop crying. I can't, you know, I could mm -hmm. be, be wiped out for a day by one pregnant woman's belly walking down the street. And I yeah. was- Hey, I, you were fucked. That could I, take I, I was fucked. I, I, I went up one day to a pregnant teenager who was walking down the street drinking a beer and I, I knocked the beer out of her hand and I realized, okay, you got to get a hold of this. And the not mom was a, it came from that. It yeah. came from me looking for a space of I'm okay mm -hmm. and looking for a hug when I couldn't seem to find one, except for Mr. Not Mom, as you say. Um, and so, you know, it. so that's part of why once I discovered from day one that, oh, wait, there are women who are the mirror opposite of me, women who knew at age 10, I don't want to have a kid. I like kids, but I don't want to have one. And then the more I did research and learned that some of those women choose to work with children every day. They're pediatric nurses, they're school teachers, they're pediatric counselors, and yet they don't want a child of their own, and that's okay. Um, so I want to switch back just a little bit off of Laura's comment to you, Jody, and say that, ask you about what I know I have learned is that the dimensions of childlessness are so much more vast than anybody even thinks about because not many people think about it. My examples would be women who got an abortion in their teens or 20s, never dreaming that would be the last pregnancy of their life. Or women who, and, and Laura can testify to this because on the Not Mom, we have had a woman working with us who was very actively grieving that she would never have a child, even as her husband made her a caregiver for his son from his first marriage. So there were people on our website saying, well, she can't call herself childless. She's got a child. Well, no, not in her head. In her head, she never gave birth and she is grieving that, that baby mm -hmm. she never had. So that may be a niche within a niche within a niche, mm -hmm. but it still exists. And if you looked at all the women in the world without children, it's not such a small niche, I will bet any amount of money. So the, gateway women, the Gateway Women membership community, which is on Mighty Networks now, um, we have the capacity to have lots of different subgroups within it. And uh, we've actually kind of put a cap on it at the moment because, you know, it was we need to kind of let it settle for a bit before we have any more. But, you know, we've got, you know, childless stepmoms, childless Christians, you know, groups for, you know, women who are creative, who are business owners. Uh, you know, as you say, you know, women of faith, women of color, um, LGBTQIA, all of these, you know, growing and growing and, and more coming up probably around being a childless adult adoptee. You know, that is a unique experience that you, you know, you were adopted and you, you know, it was a big dream of yours to have your own biological family and that hasn't worked out. You know, there's a, there's lots of different flavors of stories. And when you find that very that niche identification, it can be so incredibly helpful to help you move through your grief. And when you say that people say, oh, she's not childless because she's got this or that, you know, the idea that you can you can define someone else's story, you can define someone else's grief, and you are the arbiter of what feelings they're allowed to have. Well, that gets me quite hot under the collar. <laughs> you know, it's, out, it's outrageous that, that people feel they have the right to, 
define anyone else's subjective experience. I just want to say hi to Prince Butter, who just gave a, a comment that she's been looking for a place as she finds herself sort of without friends as they all become moms. So in terms, I just want the commenters to know we're, we're so deep in this talk that we do see you you're going by and thank you. Mm. And I'm seeing, yeah, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some friends too from the Gateway Women Online community and you know other friends and bloggers from around the world. Um, so it's uh, it's lovely to it's lovely to see the chat going through. Yeah, I doubt that Absolutely. there's any. Really Sorry. Oh no, that's just what we love about this is that you know again it's a function of of where we are in the world. You know we have. To, we can't get together, we can't have a summit, and we go back to that every episode, but instead we're doing this. So, you know, we can still communicate, we can still be in touch with people, and, you know, just, it makes us happy that we are able to have, have this kind of community. And I wanted to say thank you for doing this, and also for continuing, you know, continuing the work of the Not Mum, because I think there's something so precious about, uh, you know, organizations like Gateway Women, like the Not Mum, that have been around for a while, who, which where we've been through the journey and we're kind of in a new place. And we can, it's like we can kind of stand there for those women who are just coming through the door, you know, like, like the commenter who was talking about, you know, going through that experience of losing her friends to motherhood. And I know that they can look at us and see, okay, this is survivable. You know, there, there's there's a future, and it's you know, staying in this space is a is an act of um, I think it's a real act of paying it forward. You know, when you know women like us, who in a way, you know, Karen, you, you got so much out of setting up the not mum. You know, I set up Gateway Women for me. I need I created what I needed. You know, exactly. That's exactly. But right. Yeah, but I don't need it anymore. You know, I, I'm doing it. I, I'm paying it forward to the next generation. And, you know, one of the Gateway Women will be 10 years old next year. Um, I have a wonderful colleague in Karen Enfield, who's uh, 15 years younger than me, who's kind of stepping up more and more into a leadership role because she is also more the age demographic of, you know, the women who generally join Gateway Women at first, although it does vary, but a lot of them are in there you know, early to late 30s to mid 40s, that's the kind of crucial time. Um, and, you know, for me, I'm really looking forward to the next bit of the journey, which is why, you know, I'm creating the Inspiring Childless Elders, you know, webinar with Karen, because it means that once again, I feel like those resources, you know, for those of us moving into, uh, you know, past midlife and into our young elderhood and our older elderhood as childless women, there isn't anything out there. Just like there wasn't anything, you know, there wasn't anything, Karen, for you and I, when we needed it, you know, a decade ago. Well, for the decade, we're going to have to build it again. <laughs> exactly. And Jody, we've got a question from French Butter. Why the name Gateway? Why did you choose that? It was, I, it was one of those things. It was just a kind of extraordinary inspiration moment. I just thought it, it, it came to me. And then I, thought about but why I had the same thing I'm like okay but why and I realize it's actually about thresholds uh, a, you know a gate is a threshold between one space and another and it can be something that bars you from moving into the next stage or it's something that opens and invites you into the next stage and I realized that I'm fascinated by thresholds in my writing in my work as a therapist for example, I seem to be drawn to those those threshold moments in life. I, I um, when I was in the UK, I worked in schools as a uh, as a kind of school therapist. When I was doing my training to be a psychotherapist, I adored working with adolescents. I, you know, I working with young people on that threshold into developing an adult consciousness and an adult body. You know, then I'm becoming or not becoming a mother menopause, aging, death, all of the big taboo thresholds, I find them really fascinating because they are moments, they are periods of extraordinary transformation in human consciousness. 
for each of us and we each pass through them in one way or another and I guess that's where I I get really excited as a as a therapist and as a person and as a as an artist as a writer because that's where poetry and art exists in the in-between spaces I love your depth Jody your mind I I find my you know the not mom I came to that because I was tired again in my own life of mm. consistently, it seemed like daily in some space, a drugstore, at the job, I had to answer the question, do you have children? And I'd say, no, I'm not a mom. And so not a mom, not mom. Mm. To me, the word mom is a label that people don't even notice how universal it is because it's like carpeting, it's like grass. Mom is everywhere. There are our military moms and you know, special needs moms and moms, 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 moms. And so the fact that I wasn't a mom meant I didn't have a label. And yeah. I got a lot of pushback from at the beginning from people who thought I was celebrating something that we are not. And so I love the name Gateway Women. I wish I'd been able to come up with something that deep and powerful and positive. I don't personally don't think the not mom is not positive. It's just who I am. I'm not, and I tried it. Trust me, I tried graphically to make the name not a mom, and it just looks stupid. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we got here, you know. But, um, but are, they are so tricky and they are so powerful and so divisive. Um, yeah. I, mean, I, I talk about it in my book. People say, but I don't want a label. And, and I'm like, I get it. I get it that we don't want a label. But whether you want one or not, people are giving you one. Yes. So the question is, maybe choose one for yourself. I mean, I the, the analogy I used was, you know, in Britain and in America, the, the, the women that fought for the right to vote. You know, in the UK, uh, they were called suffragettes. They were named suffragettes actually by a sort of a populist newspaper to belittle them, you know, um, but it actually stuck. Um, so uh, but they were the women of the women's suffrage movement and they got called suffragettes. And now these days, we don't call women who vote suffragettes. We just call them voters. We don't need that label anymore because that battle has been won in some countries, in all countries. And I think that when we no longer need a label that, that defines whether you're a mother or whether or not a mother and what flavor of not mother you are, whether it's a choice, you know, the battle will have been won. We're not there yet. And until oh, we're oh. there, we need labels to kind of identify our tribe behind and to join together with pride in the way that the LGBT movement has. You know, they've reclaimed gay and queer and so many words that used to be, you know, incredibly hot and insulting words. Um, and I know that there's a lot of work going on around that within anti-racism as work, work as well. Words are very powerful. I would follow up with that to say that the power of assumption is what usually does us all in, no matter what category it is. Because I have had, I can't tell you how many really reporters from really big newspapers and broadcast outlets have called me to set up an interview and their first question is, why didn't you want children? And I think, okay, first you're lazy because you could find on my website that I really wanted them. But more than that, they represent so many people in my life who have just, auto the minute I say I don't have children, they jump to the negative. Why do you hate children? Why did you choose not to? And then when you tell them the truth that you really wanted them, but for whatever reason, you didn't have them, people shut up because it's about as uncomfortable as talking about death. It mm -hmm. really is. I think for the other person, it's like going to a funeral and, oh, I don't want to go because I don't know what to say. The minute you say, I wanted children, but I couldn't have them. People just go, ah, dab, dab, I got a place to go. <laughs> you know, so yeah. when you talk about we're not there yet, I got to say, I don't know if those kinds of emotional responses from people will ever go away. Nor mm -hmm. will their curiosity, that humble few who have the testicles to go right in your face and say, well, what happened? Why don't you have them? Why? And they really want to, some of them might be your own family, but some of them may be plain strangers with bad testicles. It's yes, extraordinary that, that, that it does come quite often, from, you know, from strangers. I mean, in Karen's webinar that she's doing on, um, which day is it? Uh, Friday. 
the World Childless Week, you know, how to deal with comments. I mean, I was talking the other day to some of the bees in my online bee program, which is like the year long mentorship program, about how sort of personal a question it is when someone says basically, oh, you don't have children, why not? And one of the kind of responses, if you kind of really want to have a crash and burn social interaction, is to kind of go, wow, I didn't know we were going to get that personal so fast. How much do you earn? <laughs> <laughs> how much do you earn? You know, um, or what's your preferred <laughs> sexual position? I mean, it, it's a really intimate question. And that's what we, we need to educate people about is that, you know, stop step, you know, stop stepping on these social landmines. This no, this can with one in five women generally around the world reaching midlife without children, you know, 10% of whom is estimated a child free, 90% are childless, not by choice or by circumstance. It's like, this is no longer a safe opening question. Um, and I, I think we need to, you know, we, it's a big education campaign. I mean, people, are, a lot of people are ignorant of this. And it's very difficult when you're grieving to push back against it, which is why I think it's so great, you know, uh, women who are, you know, in a better space about it continue to talk about it. Because I think it's really hard to stick up with your, for yourself in those situations and push back and give a smart answer or open up a space for kind of reflective curiosity if the person is really up for it. If actually all you want to do is to run to your car and burst into tears, or you're in the office and you can't really, you know, it's a moment when it's just not appropriate to speak truth to power and go, you know, that is really not okay what you just said. It's, it's so complex. And I think pronatalism, which is the ideology that fuels this prejudice against women without children and men without children, you know, functions in the same way as all kind of privilege-based things like racism, sexism, and ageism. There is a dominant group that is blind to its privilege and so blunts into these conversations with people who are not holders of that privilege and then get surprised when they're upset. <laughs> but instead of going, oh, I, I need to learn a bit more about this, they then think that the person who's upset is being sensitive. Mm -hmm. you know. I'm sorry. I have. To, I'm. I'm. I'm trying not to laugh because you're making so many very deep points, and I can see from the comments that your points are resonating with our our viewers. You're, you're yes. Louis, you're saying, "Oh my, OMG, yes." But you're you're reminding me that just last week I was speaking with a local pastor of a very large church, um, who's my my elderly aunt's pa pa pastor, and I'm sort of a caregiver. Um. And he was saying, so I was, he asked me what I did and I was telling him about the not mom. And he gave me this very long unsolicited story about his own experience right. adopting a child because his wife couldn't have a child. And, oh, I am, you know, and basically wanted me to know that he was very attuned to, you know, women without children and, and, and treat and how the Christian church has, you know, some ways to go sort of with handling them. But in his church, things were just fine. And I very quietly, I said, you know, I have a friend who is exceptionally Christian who I have more than one who don't go to services, even, you know, across the board doesn't have to be Christian. They don't go to Mother's Day events because it's not for them. And that's not a Sunday for them. And he said, oh, I'm very conscious of that. And I said, really? I said, well, you realize that if all you do during your Mother's Day sermon is at some point say, would all those in the congregation please rise? That leaves a lot of women still sitting in the pews who are quietly crying that nobody's paying attention to, including you. And he was quiet for so long on the phone that I had to say, Pastor, are you there? <laughs> and I thought, you know, and after I hung up, I thought, I'm really proud of myself because I sort of gave it back to him. And I hope I planted a seed, you know, for him to take away. So as I listened to you, Jody, my first thought was, wow, Jody's so powerful and she can just stand up to anybody. And then I thought about it and I thought, no, nah, I think I kind of messed up that pastor's day. So if we all <laughs> up instead of just sucking it in, maybe we can help all help the world to change. Every single one of us. You don't have to have a gateway woman behind you. I say that about role models, you know, when people would laugh, 
these things are huge with my life. I put much array of complex, you know, because I'm not a mother, I've got to do something extraordinary. I don't know. You know, the only thing you know, to be a role model and to be powerful and fathers and child free women, the most radical thing you can do is just to live your life unapologetically. You know, to, to not hide it. To be, you don't have to kind of start an organization, you don't have to write a blog, you don't have to change your life. You just have to be us. Just the impact we have on other people just by being a politic ourselves as child and women. And it can't be, can't be underestimated. When I look at the impact of my life, I actually have my nieces, um, for 50 years, uh, on their thoughts about the other ones. I don't know what to do. I mean, it's a powerful conversation. I think, you know, one of the things is, you know, it's probably going to remain half free. Jody, it looks like we've got some uh, connection issues with your audio, and we're not sure why. Uh, but uh, I but thought it was some. Good. No, it seems to be the show itself. But uh, you know, we we are actually coming up on the end of the show. So, uh, Jody, if you can, can you remind us of what's going on next week uh, with World Childless Week? Jody's frozen on my screen, um, which may be why the audio is coming out like piano keys sound. That may be the case. That may so be the case. So, yeah. So, putting up the slides, I think, is a great idea, Laura. We'll just wrap All up. Right. All right. Well, and Jody, if, if we can't get your audio back on, uh, we do want to thank you, of course, for being a part of the show. And, uh, you know, we always love to talk with you. Um, and we are really excited about next week's events. And, and we did, in fact, lose Jody. So, <laughs> but, uh, but hey, it couldn't have been better timing because technically we're done. We, I, I noticed that. Fell apart that way, but I, I love hearing from her. She's just just doing so much. The girl's got energy beyond energy. Absolutely, that is why we absolutely love Jody. Uh, so, but we do actually, real quick, before we close the show entirely, we've got a tiny little announcement for our viewers uh, that we are going to be changing the date and time of our show moving forward. Uh, so to kind of. Uh, expand the concept of the Not Mom Conversation. We are doing, we could call it Not Mom Conversation and Cocktails uh, because we are switching to a new time, 7 p.m. Eastern on the second Thursday of every month, uh, which means that our next episode will be October 8th. Uh, and we don't yet know what we're talking about, but we encourage you to join us, bring a glass of wine, a cocktail, a beer, and uh, join whatever conversation we're going to have next. Thank you, everybody. You can catch this recording, um, share it with your friends on YouTube from the Not Mom channel. And we hope you have a safe and wonderful month ahead. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you soon.